What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero back with another Imperial Format video. And this video is special because it's going to be my last video showing off gameplay in Imperial Format for quite some time. I'll still have a final like tier list ranking for Imperial Format just like I've done for the formats I've covered in the past. But for now, this will be my last video actually showing off decks and gameplay. Now, I wanted to close out this format on a pretty high note, and I think that this deck is the perfect way to do this. Because I think that this deck, Hats Control, is one of the coolest decks to arise out of exploring this format. But before we dive into exactly what this deck is trying to do, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. This is the best way to keep up to date with my exploration of these old formats, and I'll be jumping into Android format pretty soon, which is a pretty popular format. So if you want to follow my exploration of that, subscribing is the best way to do so. In addition, if you want to play any of these formats that I feature in these videos for yourself, we have a Discord server. Link will be in the description down below. But it's a great place to find games in these obscure and often underexplored formats. And lastly, if you enjoy the video, as always, please do leave a like down below. It really helps out these videos a lot. But with all that out of the way, let's discuss what this deck is trying to do. So in my guide for Imperial Format, I mentioned Magical Hats as kind of an interesting card that maybe Empty Jar could potentially use to flip down their flip monsters after they'd been flipped up. Uh, but I didn't really think it was that good of a card, so I sort of, you know, talked about it and then ignored it. Uh, my Discord users, however, did not. They saw some potential in this card that was really cool. One Discord user in particular, Soul Emerald 69 sort of pioneered this idea using magical hats in conjunction with some very powerful flip monsters to send powerful spells and traps to the graveyard and then get them back with things like Magician of Faith and Mask of Darkness. And I think this was a really cool idea. So. I sort of took this idea and using a lot of inspiration from their initial list for it, I made some slight changes to suit what I wanted the deck to be a little bit more. Basically what I did was I just, you know, made it more flip focused and went all in on the magical hats. You know, they were playing, I think, two copies of this. I was just like, you know, I want to play hats control. I'm going all in. So I did go all in. And whether that was the right choice or not, you know, it's a bit debatable. But I figured it would make for a very fun final video. And I do think that the duels I featured with this were a very fun way to close out Imperial Format. But before we dive into those duels, let's go into the card by card here. So of course we're playing three magical hats. This is a very weird card for the time because it actually does a lot of different things. But basically what it does is that during your opponent's battle phase, you choose two spells or traps from your deck and one monster in your main monster zone. Special summon them as normal monsters with zero attack and defense in face down defense position. Set the chosen monster of its face up and then shuffle them on the field. And then the two cards that are chosen from your deck are destroyed at the end of the battle phase and cannot remain on the field except during this battle phase. So that's a lot of words, uh, and it is a pretty complicated effect, but basically the important parts of it are if you've got a monster that's face up, it flips it face down, enabling you to reuse flip effects, and also it basically acts as a foolish burial goods, uh, just sending spells and traps to your graveyard. Uh, which I think is pretty neat, a uh, pretty neat application of this card. It does have some flaws, uh, specifically with Jinzo being in the format. Uh, you, this can get shut down if your opponent just brings out Jinzo and you've got a face-up flip monster, then you've kind of been punished. Uh, but, you know, if you can avoid Jinzo, uh, then this deck is pretty good. We, of course, are playing a Jinzo in this deck because this can be great after you flipped up a monster and you don't have a Magical Hat. You can just tribute it off for Jinzo. So we are playing one of those. It is searchable off of Witch of the Black Forest as well, which we're playing alongside two Sangans because these three recruiters are some of the best monsters in this format, being able to search pretty much any monster that you'd want from your deck to hand. We've also got three Mystic Tomatoes to search out these recruiters, and also we have a Cannon Soldier, which Mystic Tomato can also search out. Cannon Soldier's nice at being able to tribute off a bunch of your monsters uh, to just go for that final game shot. Also, interestingly enough, in this deck, you can also search out Mask of Darkness with Mystic Tomato. And Mask of Darkness is a flip monster that lets you get back traps from Grave. So if you sort of combine Mask of Darkness with Magical Hats, you can either get back the Magical Hats 
or you can get back another powerful trap that you potentially send to the graveyard off of magical hats like Imperial Order, Call of the Haunted, and Mirror Force, which are the other traps that we're playing. These are all insanely strong cards. Mirror Force is great at stopping aggressive pressure. Imperial Order can shut down your opponent's spells, especially something like Nobleman of Crossout. And Call of the Haunted can bring back your monsters, things like potentially Jinzo. Uh, pair very well with Call of the Haunted. For the other flip monsters, we're playing three Magician of Faith to get back the spells that we potentially send to the graveyard off of Magical Hats. We're playing three Man Eater Bugs because this is a good out to Jinzo, and with Magical Hats it can be repeatable. And lastly, we're playing a Morphing Jar, which can replenish your hand if you need it. Uh, Morphing Jar is also something that you can combine with Magical Hats, although you'll probably use that a little bit less than the other flip monsters that you're going to use with Magical Hats. Lastly, for the monsters, we're playing a Giant Soldier of Stone. Uh, you can use this to get a little bit aggressive, as 1300 isn't the worst attack set in this format and can beat over things like Witch and Sangan, and also does pair very well with Magical Hats, as Magical Hats can flip down a Giant Soldier of Stone, switching it back to defense position. For these spells, we've got pretty much all the power spells you'd want in this format, We've got a change of heart and a snatch deal to take our opponent's monsters. We've got a confiscation link with duo and forceful sentry to rip apart their hand. We've got a dark hole and a raigeki to clear away their board. We've got a monster reborn and a premature burial to bring back monsters from our grave, just like called the haunted. Uh, we've got a pot of greed to draw deeper into our deck. We've got three mystical space typhoon and their spell and trap removal of choice. We're only playing three of these because deck space is kind of tight in this deck. I mean, there are things you can cut if you want to play more, but I feel like three is good enough for this deck, especially when it has access to so much spell and trap recursion. And we're also playing painful choice to send a bunch of powerful spells and traps to grave to potentially get them back off of things like Magician of Faith or Mask of Darkness. Lastly, we're playing a Swords of Revealing Light, which is, you know, just a very good way at stalling your opponent if they don't have spell and trap removal, and also potentially enabling you to keep a flip monster on field, so that way your opponent can't attack into it. Um, this does conflict a little bit with Magical Hats, but if you don't actually have Magical Hats, you will probably want to draw this, so uh, I think it's good enough. For the side deck, we've got three Mechanical Chasers if we want to get a bit more aggressive. We've got two Nobleman of Crossout and one Ceasefire in case we're up against something like Empty Jar. We're on a Heavy Storm and three Dust Tornado in case we're against a deck that is playing a lot more back row. We're on three Solemn Wishes in case we go up against Burn. And we're on two Trap Hole in case we're up against a more beatdown focused deck. I think this deck is really sick. Uh, it does have some key flaws that are not that hard to see. For instance, Jinzo can shut down magical hats. And also, if your opponent does have Nobleman of Crossout, they can just wait until after the battle phase and then just Nobleman of Crossout, whatever you set back down. But regardless of this, I think that this is really, really cool. So shout out to Soul for actually innovating on this. And, you know, I think it's awesome. So let's just dive into some games. Okay, appropriately enough, we've got a game against Soul65, who is the creator of this deck. So, awesome that we actually get to feature it against them. Uh, we are playing the Hat Control deck. Unclear what they're playing, but we will find out. We're going to win the Rock, Paper, Scissors, so we will go first here. And let's see what we get to start out. We draw a hand of three Maneater Bugs. That's, uh, that's pretty crazy. Honestly, um, not necessarily what we want to see. We do have the Magical Hatch, which is nice, and we have a Magician of Faith to pair with it. Uh, so that could be useful later. Um, but right now, we just want to set the Man Eater Bug, and we'll set this Mystical Space Typhoon as a bluff. Pass back to them. Uh, we could have set Magical Hats, as it can be used, uh, even if your monster is set. But we don't really feel the need to use it yet. We'd rather get value by, you know, flipping back down a Man Eater Bug or Faith. Uh... Anyways, they're going to draw, they're going to fire a Painful Choice, which is very good in the opener. Uh, and they're going to send five good ones. We could give them the Nobleman of Cross out here, because we've got the other two Man Eater Bugs in hand. So, like, we just lose the one on field. And with Sangan, they can, like, crash into our Man Eater Bug, get another search off that. So, we could give them the Nobleman instead. Uh, however, I, I just give them the Sangan because I don't want them to get in any damage if they get another monster in hand. So we just give them that. And we're not giving them any of the hand rips because that's just kind of devastating on our current hand. Uh, they're going to fire a Swords of Young Light and that will kill our Man Eater Bug. So we are going to fire a Mystical Space Typhoon to get rid of that and prevent it from actually being able to flip up our monster. So 
That will go through. They're going to bring out Sangan, attack into our set. Man Eater Bug will pop the Sangan here. They'll get a search off that. They're going to grab a Witch, which doesn't really play the best with Man Eater Bug, unfortunately. Uh, we draw a Mask of Darkness, and we actually have an interesting sort of decision here. We could just summon out the Mask of Darkness and attack in for 900. Set Magical Hats. Then next turn in the battle phase, we can use Magical Hats to reset Mask of Darkness, grab a powerful trap and a powerful spell to pair with the Magician of Faith for later and the Mask of Darkness on field. Uh, if they hit the Mask of Darkness, then we just get back Magical Hats, which isn't the worst. But if they hit one of the others, then we can flip up Mask of Darkness the next turn and get a powerful trap to hand. So we're going to think about this, and we are indeed going to go for this line because I think it's really sick, uh, and we're just going to pass back to them. So, we feel pretty good about this. If they clear the Mask of Darkness, uh, honestly, we're not too torn up about that since they're using a removal spell on Mask of Darkness on all things. Um, but they're going to think a bit about what to do here. And they're going to fire a Reborn, bring back the Sangan. Uh, and that's fine by us. We can't do anything about that. And then they're going to tribute the Sangan for a Jinzo. So, this is... A bit of bad news for us because they'll be able to get a search here and also they'll be able to shut off our magical hats. And magical hats can only be activated in the battle phase so even if we had the read that they had Jinzo here, um, we wouldn't have been able to activate this main phase one. So a bit unfortunate. They're going to attack over our Mask of Darkness getting in for 1500. Then main two they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw Giant Soldier Stone which is pretty nice. We're just going to set this Man Eater Bug though. Pass back to them. This is one of the reasons why we're playing so many man your bugs is because we really need outs to Jinzo as it really shuts off our strategy. So they're going to fire a Pot of Greed, draw two, uh, and they're going to summon out a Witch, which makes sense. They're going to attack in to the man your bug with the Jinzo. We will just pop the Jinzo. Uh, we could get punished here if they're set. It's like called the Haunted, but I'm not too worried about that. They're going to attack in for 1100 and pass back to us. We draw Premature Burial, so we could bring back a monster and then just Magical Hat it later. Uh, but instead, we're just going to set this Giant Soldier Stone and pass back to them. We could have summoned the stone and attacked into the Witch, let them get a search, and then if they attack into the stone again, we could Magical Hats it. Uh, but I feel like since we're running a bit low on life points and they've got Jinzo Engrave, we want to play this a bit more defensively. So they're going to set a bunch. I guess they have the reason it's a Morphing Jar. And they're going to attack into our set. Luckily, it's just the stone. So they'll take 900 there. Fire a Fisher to clear the stone. Set one and pass back to us. We draw a Geki, which is pretty good. We could activate it here, but with the Witch, it's not really as good. So we'll just set the Man Eater Bug, set a Premature Burial, and set the Geki and pass back to them. We figure since they've got so many cards in their back row, they're not going to fire a Heavy Storm anytime soon. So we feel good about this. They're going to think about this for a bit. Set one, flip up a Tomato. And they're going to attack into our bug. We're going to think about this, and we are going to pop the witch because uh, we've got Raigeki to clear the rest of their field later. Uh, so we don't really need to worry about clearing the witch right now. Uh, they're just going to pass back to us, though. We draw Imperial Order, which is very nice. We're going to fire this Raigeki, and they're going to think, and that's ultimately fine. So we managed to clear the Tomato and a Magician of Faith, so that's very good as they've got some very powerful spells in Grave there. Uh, we're going to set this Magician of Faith to potentially get back the Raigeki later and pass back to them. They are going to summon out the Mechanical Chaser that they searched off the Witch. That's fine. Uh, we can grab back that Raigeki. So that is indeed what we'll do. Uh, and we can use the Raigeki next turn to potentially clear the Chaser. Uh, we draw a Morphing Jar, which is pretty nice. We're going to fire the Raigeki here and just set the Morphing Jar, pass back to them. We can potentially get a draw five here. Uh, and if they've got cards in hand... Uh, then they'll have to discard them, which is pretty nice. They're going to bring out a Mystic Tomato here, and they're going to attack into our set. It's the Morphing Jar, so we will get to draw five here, and they've got three full cards in hand, so that's very nice to see. Uh, they're going to discard a couple good ones. Very happy to see those gone, especially the Cannon Soldier, which could have been very annoying. Uh, and they're going to draw five there. They're going to set one pass back to us. And they're down to 13 cards in deck, so we could potentially win through deck out. Although I think we should be good just being able to win through damage here. Uh, because I feel like we're in a pretty good position now. We're going to bring out this Mystic Tomato. And we're just going to start crashing. Um, because they've already got a Mystic Tomato in Grave. And we have none, so we should be able to win this Tomato War here. 
Uh, so we're going to attack in. Unfortunately, they do have a mirror force. So that will clear the tomato. We're going to fire a forceful sentry. They're going to fire Imperial Order. We're going to fire a mystical space typhoon to get rid of the Imperial Order. So we will get to see their hand. Uh, and this is a pretty decent one. They've got Rush Recklessly, Dark Hole, Jar, and Premature Burial. I think of these, we can deal with the Premature Burial because we have a Mystical Space Typhoon, so we're not worried about that. Uh, yeah, this is a bit tricky. I think probably the Dark Hole is the right pick here. Uh, we do indeed send back the Dark Hole. They may have a monster on board now, but if we ever manage to clear it, which we've got Mirror Force, so we can do that, um, it would be a bit iffy. So we're going to get rid of that Dark Hole there. And they are indeed going to shuffle that back. And we're going to set the Mystical Space Typhoon and a Mirror Force here. Pass back to them. They are going to just go to battle and attack in for 14. We'll take it. We could have fired the Mirror Force here. Uh, but I feel okay about not doing that. They're just going to set one, set another, set another. Pass back to us. We draw a Mask of Darkness, which would be pretty good later on with our Magical Hats. Especially because we've got a Mirror Force here in Imperial Order. Um... But for now, we're just going to fire this premature burial to try and get aggressive. We can do our tomato crashing play yet again, if we so wish. Uh, they unfortunately do have a mystical space siphon for that, so that will clear that. Um, and having the read that they're set is the morphing jar that they had in hand. We're going to set our mask of darkness and then fire a swords to trigger the morphing jar and then draw some cards. Uh, this was a bit of a mistake because it's not a morphing jar, it's a man-eater bug. So that will pop our set monster there and... No drawing will occur. Luckily for us, this means that they can't attack, and they've used up uh, a spell and trap removal in the form of Mystical Space Typhoon, so if they don't have more, then we feel pretty good about this. Uh, and if they do, we do have a Mirror Force as well. They're just going to set two and pass, and now we know that that's the Morphing Jar. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring out this Witch. We're going to attack in to what we know is the Morphing Jar and draw five here. Uh, we get some pretty good ones here. Jinzo is very nice at, you know, sort of clearing the way for aggression. Uh, Change of Heart can take one of their monsters to tribute off for the Jinzo. We got Reborn to take their Jinzo. You know, this is, this is a pretty good hand. I think we probably should be able to win soon. And if we don't, you know, they've only got six cards in deck, so we could potentially stall out to win by deck out. Uh, they're going to set two, pass back to us, and we draw Morph, uh, not Morphing Jar, we draw a Dark Hole, which is incredibly good. We could Dark Hole the board. Uh, get a search off Witch, clear their entire board, and get in for damage. So we're going to just fire a Mystical Space Typhoon to clear up a back row spot so we can actually do stuff here. And we hit a Change of Heart, which is a very good one. We fire the Dark Hole here, and unfortunately they do have a Sangan, um, but it looks like they don't have any targets for it left. So we feel very good about that. We're going to grab a Cannon Soldier, and now we're going to summon out the Cannon Soldier. That's fine by them. And we're just going to attack in because we can't win this turn, uh, even if we reborn their Jinzo. Uh, so we're just going to try and get in some steady damage here. We can then change of heart whatever they set or summon next turn, so we feel good about this. Swords is still up, so they can't attack over the Cannon Soldier. And even if they could, we get Mirror Force for it. So we feel fine about this. They're going to fire a Raigeki. We've got the Imperial Order. Uh, they've got a Mystical Space Typhoon for the Imperial Order, so quite unfortunate. They're going to set one pass back to us, but honestly, we're pretty fine with this. I think we actually can win the game here. We fire a change of heart on their set. We tribute off for a Jinzo, and we can just reborn either their Jinzo or our cannon soldier. And either way, that will be the end of the game. So, very intense uh, game one. And it didn't seem like it was going to go in Hats Control's favor. Uh... Unfortunately, our hats play early on was interrupted, and we never got an opportunity to really use it again. But I think this kind of shows how good the flip monsters can all be, even if you don't get to hats them. Uh, and how the deck can just win out of nowhere, just like pretty much any deck can, using the generic good stuff cards that a lot of these decks play. Uh, for game two, we don't really sign anything in. It looks like they're just on a typical good stuff list, so uh, we're already kind of prepared for that. So we don't really feel the need to change anything up here. Uh, and we are going to go second here. So, this is a great opener. It would have been great to go first, but uh, they're going to fire another painful choice in the opener here. And again, they send three handers, which is kind of unfortunate. And they send a Sangan and Reborn. I think we want to give them the Sangan here. As the Reborn just represents the Sangan anyways. So, yeah, we'll, we'll just give them the Sangan. And kind of unfortunate, but... 
At least we're not giving them another card here. They're just going to bring out the same game, set one pass back to us. And we could potentially just summon out Giant Soldier Stone and attack into their Saiyan Gan, then Delinquent Duo to try to hit whatever they bring out. We do have Magical Hats to set the Giant Soldier Stone afterwards. But we're going to actually open with this Delinquent Duo instead and play a bit more defensively, I think. So we're going to hit... Oh, we hit a Raigeki. That is very nice. Uh, we hit Raigeki and they'll discard the Mechanical Chaser. We're going to set our Giant Soldier Stone and then set a Magical Hat and pass back to them. They are going to fire a Nobleman on our Giant Soldier Stone. Unfortunate, but at least this way we get to keep our Flip Monsters in deck. And they're going to attack in for a thousand here. So we'll take that. Uh, main two, they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw another Magical Hat, which is pretty nice. We're going to set this Sangan here. Pass back to them. And they're going to think a bit about what to do here. Summon out a Tomato. And they're going to attack into our set. It's Sangan, so we'll be able to search our deck here. Unclear what we want to search necessarily. Um, I don't know, maybe a Witch would be good. Or we could just get a Tomato. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're just getting a Tomato. Uh, this can clear their Sangan potentially. And, you know, they can do the whole Tomato Crashing War, but uh, I think it's fine. Uh, well, or we could just draw a Raigeki. So we're going to summon out the Tomato, fire this Raigeki, clear their entire board there. They will get a search off the Sangan, unfortunately. Um, but we can attack in for 1400 so I feel pretty good about that. And then we'll just pass back to them. Uh, they're going to bring out a Witch, and they're going to fire a Fisher, which is quite unfortunate, but not the worst thing in the world. They're going to attack in for 1100 here, and just pass back to us. We are running pretty low on life points, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, we're going to think about exactly what to do here. We could just set the Faith and grab back, like, a Raigeki, uh, which isn't bad. Uh, but it's also not the best because they get a search off the uh, witch. So, like, what we're actually going to do here is we're going to set Mask of Darkness. And then in the battle phase, we're going to try and Magical Hats. Worst case scenario, we just get Magical Hats back. Uh, best case scenario, we get something like a Mirror Force, potentially. Or we could also send a spell for the Magician of Faith as well. Um, they are going to just attack into our set here. We're going to fire the Magical Hats and get out two cards from our deck. So we're going to send Call of the Haunted and Imperial Order. And, you know, it's kind of jank doing this on Dueling Book. You kind of got to get creative with how you actually do things here. Um, but Magical Hat actually does, like, enable you to have a macro where you can set your spells and traps from your hand to the monster zones, which is pretty neat. Um, so we do that, and then we just add the remaining cards uh, back to our hand. So, uh... Let's see what they attack here. Uh, they're going to roll the dice just to decide what to attack. If they attack the Mask of Darkness, that's probably worst case scenario, as we can just get back the hats. But if they attack one of our other sets, then we potentially get a powerful trap here. Yep, they attack Call of the Haunted, so now Call of the Haunted and Imperial Lord both go to Grave. And they're going to set one pass back to us. Now we can potentially flip up the Mask of Darkness, get something like Imperial Order or Call of the Haunted, and feel pretty good about it. We're going to bring out this Mystic Tomato here, and we're just going to attack over the Witch. I think we're playing around Mirror Force here. Uh, looks like they don't have it, though, so they're going to get a search off the Witch here. Uh, and they're going to think about this for a bit. Just, uh, it is a tough choice here, and they're going to get a Magician of Faith. Because they got the Magician of Faith, we're going to flip up this Mask of Darkness and get back a Imperial Order. Yep, uh, so this should be able to stop whatever they get back with the Faith. We'll set two pass back to them, and they are going to set one, set another pass back to us. So we have a pretty strong read that that's the Faith, so we can feel fine attacking over it with the Mask here, potentially. Uh, we're going to set the Premature Burial, though, instead, just in case it's like Morphing Jar. But either way, we're attacking with the Mask. They'll be able to get a spell back with the Faith, getting back a Raigeki here, and we'll be able to attack in for 1,400. So I'll drop them down to 49. Uh, we'll pass back to them. They summon out a Goblin Attack Force, which is an interesting card. Um, so they will be able to clear our monster here with that. Um, and they fire Raigeki. We've got Imperial Order, but unfortunately they've got a Mystical Space Typhoon. So that will clear the order and they'll be able to get in for 2300 points of damage, which is non-negligible. That's a lot of our life points. Uh, Goblin Attack Force will switch back to defense though there. So it's not the best for them, but, uh... 
it is good enough. Uh, we're at a very low life point threshold now, so we're at major risk of losing here, especially if we activate our premature burial. That drops us down to 800, so it's a bit worrying. Uh, we draw a reborn, though, which is pretty nice. We could bring back a Sangan or a tomato. Um, looks like they don't really have... I mean, we could bring back Mechanical Chaser as well, um, but it's kind of iffy. This is actually a very tricky play here. Uh, and we could just get passive. We could, like, set a Magician of Faith or a Mask of Darkness instead of going aggressive here. So there's a lot to think about here uh, and a lot of different sort of potential avenues to go down. And I think that's one of the fun parts of this deck is that there are a lot of very important decisions that you have to be making with it. Uh, and those decisions can be very fun and very satisfying. We're going to fire a Reborn and we're going to target the Sangan. Uh, we will get back that Sangan. We'll attack in to the Goblin Attack Force just to clear it. And then main two, we are going to set this Magician of Faith and pass back to them. So with the Magician of Faith, we can either get back a Raigeki or a Reborn, depending on what they've got. And I feel like with that, we should be able to potentially wrap up the game next turn. Uh, it's kind of iffy though, so we'll see what happens. They're going to fire a Snatch Deal on our Sangan, which is fine. Um, nothing we can really do about that. But ultimately, this isn't the worst until they fire a change of heart. Well, <laughs> change of heart will do it here um, because they can just change of heart our Magician of Faith, get back a spell uh, like Reborn, and just win the game. And if we had set Mask of Darkness instead, they still would have been able to win the game because they'd have 1,900 attack on board. So kind of unfortunate that that's how their turn ended up there, but uh, it is what it is. Hands like that are not uncommon in this format, so you've got to kind of always play around them. Uh, not much we could have really done there, though, I think. Um, but I'm glad that I got to show off the Magical Hats combo in that game, because I do think it's a really cool combo. And I think that, you know, it could have easily gone either way there, because both of us at the end were in very precarious positions. But uh, that was game two. Going to game three, I don't think we changed anything. Again, we're kind of prepared for this deck. We did see Goblin Attack Force in there, so maybe they're on a more beatdown-focused version of good stuff. So maybe we could have sided in some trap holes, but I feel fine with our deck as is. So we're going to go first here. And this is a very good opener. Wow. Uh, we're going to fire Pot of Greed to start. <laughs> well, this is this is probably the best opener I've, I've ever gotten. We're going to fire Delinquent Duo first just to, you know, snipe cards out of their hand and then get the final peak with Forceful. We'll fire the Forceful, see their hand. And they've got a pretty good one here. They've got Jar, Witch, and Change of Heart. I think of these, I care most maybe about the Jar. No, actually, I don't care much about the Jar because we need to set Maneater and get rid of it that way. So I think actually I care most about Chain. Mm. No, I, it's probably I care most about Witch. I, I don't know. Honestly, these are all very good choices. So uh, depending on what I want to do, uh, any of them could be reasonable to send back. We're going to send back the Change of Heart. I think this makes sense given all the powerful flip monsters in our hand here. So that will get sent back, uh, shuffled in. We're going to set this Sangan here, set a Mystical Space Typhoon, and we'll pass back to them. We could get a bit punished here. If they set Morphing Jar this turn, then it would have been better for us to have Manure Bugged. But I have the read that they're not going to do that. Um, based on how they've been playing with Morphing Jar in the past games in this match. And also, given that, you know, even if they do set Morphing Jar, they'll be discarding Witch. So I feel fine as long as they discard the Witch. Uh, and I can also, you know, set more this turn if they do go for the Morphing Jar there. But either way, let's see what they do. They're going to summon up the Witch indeed. Uh, so they're going to attack into our Sangan. So we'll get a search off that. We're going to grab the Tomato here. And main two, they're just going to set one. We're going to fire a Mystical Space Typhoon on that set, just in case. It's another Mystical Space Typhoon, so, you know, not the most valuable trade, but it's something at least. We're going to summon out this Tomato, attack into the Witch. They'll get a Search here, and they're going to grab a Tomato of their own. But honestly, I feel fine about that because we do win the Tomato War, because we've got none engraved, and they've got one engraved. So, we feel good about this. We'll pass back to them. And they're going to summon out that tomato attack into our tomato. Uh, we will get some searches here. So we're going to just search out tomato. Uh, they're going to search out another tomato as well. Uh, they're going to crash again. 
we will search out probably a witch here, I think. Oh, no, wait, we've got another tomato in deck. So, yeah, we'll just search out another tomato. They're going to search out a Sangan here, and they're just going to pass back to us, and I feel very good about this. Uh, we'll just attack into their Sangan with our tomato. I'll drop them down 400. They'll get a search here. So a little bit unfortunate. Uh, they're going to grab a man eater bug. And this just incentivizes me to set my man eater bug. I'll also just set this swords because why not? It's a bluff and it would die to spell and trap removal anyways. So we don't really care too much about setting it here. Uh, they're going to set one activate Fisher, which is unfortunate. We will lose our tomato and they'll pass back to us. Uh, we can just flip up our bug though. Pop their bug, attack in for 450 here. And then main two, we're going to set this Magician of Faith because we can get back like Pot of Greed or one of our hand rips. So we feel pretty good about this. We're also going to set this Mirror Force just in case. If they've got Heavy, that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, but I think we're in a good enough position to risk this. We've also got Mask of Darkness in hand to get back the Mirror Force. So I feel fine about this. They're going to Special Summon out the Fiend Mega Cyber, which is a very interesting tech. Uh, this is a card that I haven't really shown off that much in this format. I don't think it's the best, but it can be a neat comeback monster. You know, if your opponent is able to go up in board presence, you can bring this out and potentially turn the tables. So it's cool that it's getting featured in the final Imperial format video here. Uh, they are going to just attack into our set. We're going to fire this Mirror Force because we've got Mask of Darkness to recycle it. and We have no other good way to get rid of the Fiend Mega Cyber. So we'll clear that. They'll be able to set a monster here and pass back to us. We draw a Mask of Darkness. We're going to flip up a Magician of Faith, and we are indeed going to grab back the Pot of Greed. I think maybe this was a mistake. Maybe we should have grabbed the Forceful just in case uh, to check what they've got in hand after the Morphing Jar activation. Um, but I'm a bit greedy, so I get the greedy guy, you know. We're going to summon out a Mask of Darkness here as well and just attack into their set, as this is the only monster in our hand that we actually want to use here that clears it. Uh, that will be the Morphing Jar, so they'll discard their hand, we'll discard ours, and we draw a Magical Hat, which is very nice here. We also draw some other good ones, Mystical Space Typhoon, Premature Burial, and Call of the Haunted are all not bad. Uh, we're also going to attack in for 750 here, just get in whatever damage we can. Uh, and then main two, we're going to fire this Pot of Greed, see what else we get. And that's pretty good. Uh, we're going to fire this Swords just to protect our monsters. And then we're going to set four and pass. This may be a bit greedy because they might have Heavy Storm, but we can call the Haunted back our Sangan to get some value off of that. We don't really care too much about losing the Mystical Space Typhoon, and we've got two other Magical Hats in deck. So we feel fine about this. They are going to fire a Painful Choice, which is a bit unfortunate. They can get some very powerful cards here. And they're going to get five good ones. Uh, they're going to get... Pot of Greed, Dark Hole, Monster Reborn, and then a Sangan and a Jinzo. So if we give them the Monster Reborn, they can just get back Jinzo. We obviously don't want that. If we give them Dark Hole, they can clear our whole board, which is very unfortunate. Uh, Sangan can get them more monsters later. Uh, we definitely don't want to give them Pot of Greed because that's more cards. So this is a very tricky choice. Uh, I'm not actually sure what the correct choice is. I would say the correct choice is probably to give them a Jinzo. Just so it's a brick in their hand, kind of. The others can be used immediately. Jinzo can't. Uh, but it's kind of tricky. We're going to think about this a bit. And we are indeed going to give them the Jinzo and send the others to Grave. This could easily backfire on us, but hopefully it won't. They're going to fire Snatch Deal on our mask. We're just going to fire a Mystical Space Typhoon on that, so that way they won't be able to tribute off for Jinzo. But they've got a change of heart anyway, so they'll be able to take the Mask of Darkness, tribute it off for Jinzo. And, you know, that's fine. It can't attack this turn. So, uh, oh, well, I guess it can attack this turn, actually. They're going to Mystical Space Typhoon our swords, and we won't be able to activate Magical Hats here. So we will lose the Magician of Faith. They're going to set one pass back to us. And this is a bit of a rough one. Uh, we check our graveyard to see what we can get back with the Magician of Faith, and nothing that deals with Jinzo. So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to set this Manager Bug, set a Mystical Space Typhoon, and pass back to them. If they've got no Men of Cross out, then that is very unfortunate for us, but nothing we can really do there. And unfortunately, they do have no Men of Cross out. So they'll get banished. We'll banish the remaining Manager Bug from deck, and they'll be able to attack over our Manager Bug here. Uh, they'll pass back to us, and we draw Sangan, which is not bad, so we might just want to use it. 
I think we're just going to use the Magician of Faith instead, though, to get back Pot of Greed to potentially draw into something that can deal with Jinzo. It's not looking good, though, as we've now lost some very powerful removal tools uh, from our deck. So, a bit worrying here. They're going to attack into our set. It is Magician of Faith, so we'll grab back the Pot. Uh, we are both running low, so maybe this is a mistake because uh, this way, you know, we drop below them, so we could lose by deck out potentially. But I feel okay about this. We dropped Change of Heart, which is very nice. We're going to Pot of Greed for two. And even though we have Change of Heart, we don't have a way to actually get rid of Jinzo yet here. This is a bit tricky, and we do want to clear Jinzo as soon as possible because we do have some powerful traps, and it's a very annoying card. So we actually have a pretty interesting line here. We're going to Fire Premature Burial, and we're going to target Tomato. Uh, that'll bring Tomato back to field. And we're just going to crash Tomato into Jinzo. So we'll take a 1,000. Drops us down pretty low. Uh, but we'll be able to get out a Cannon Soldier. And then in main 2, we can change of heart the Jinzo. Tribute it off with the Cannon Soldier to deal 500. We're going to also set this Witch here and just pass back to them. The Witch is more of a defensive option. Uh, they've used up Dark Hole. So if they've got Raigeki, they can clear our board. But again, with Witch, we can search something out. So we feel okay about this. If they've got like a Call of the Haunted or something, we've got pre uh, Mystical Space Typhoon for that. So we feel pretty good about this board. They're going to fire another Nobleman of Cross House that will deal with the Witch, unfortunately. And they're going to summon a Morphing Jar here so that we'll be able to clear the Cannon Soldier, unfortunately. We could have Magical Hats there, but I don't really think there was much of a point to doing that. So we'll lose the Cannon Soldier. They'll set to pass back to us. We draw Jinzo of our own, which is... Kind of nice, um, but we're just going to set the Giant Soldier of Stone and pass back to them. Uh, hopefully they won't be able to clear this with Mechanical Chaser. Uh, if they do, then, you know, we're kind of out of luck because now we don't have something to tribute for the Jinzo. Um, but I'm hoping this will be good enough to protect us. They are going to check our graveyard to see what we could potentially get back. And they're going to bring out a Goblin Attack Force, which is very unfortunate. Uh, okay, uh, they're going to attack in with Mechanical Chaser first. I guess they're probably trying to win the game here. Um, but luckily for us, it is Giant Soldier of Stone. So Mechanical Chaser won't be able to clear it on their own. Unfortunately, it looks like they do have Rush Recklessly to clear the Giant Soldier of Stone. We'll get in for 2300, or attempt to at least. We're going to call the Haunted. And we're actually going to target our Maneater Bug. And this may seem a bit weird, but the reason we're doing this is because we've got the Magical Hats. So we're going to fire the Magical Hats, and Magical Hats here actually serves multiple purposes. Uh, it can both set the man in your bug to let us get more removal, and it can deck thin for us, because we're at a low enough deck count where, you know, we've got very powerful cards left in deck that we want to draw. So if we can get rid of two cards that aren't really important right now, that'd be pretty nice. So we're going to set the bug and think about which cards we don't want to see anymore, and we're going to get out actually two Magical Hats here. So... I don't think this was necessarily the best choice, but Hats is kind of dead when you've got so low cards in deck. Um, so I think that this is fine. Uh, they're going to choose which monster to attack. And unfortunately, they do attack the bug. If they hadn't attacked the bug, then next turn we could have flipped out the bug and then tribute it off for Jinzo. But as is, uh, they do manage to hit it. So we're actually going to hit the Mechanical Chaser because we can clear the Goblin Attack Force with a Sangan next turn. So uh, that will indeed clear the Mechanical Chaser there. And we'll get back our hand. End of the battle phase, the Hats will go to Grave. And the Goblin Attack Force will switch to Defense, which is the flaw with Goblin Attack Force. And then immediately after I draw one of the cards that I probably should have sent instead of Magical Hats. Painful Choice, you know, could be good here. Uh, but with seven cards left in deck, it's unlikely that we're going to get what we need to actually win the game outright. And just puts us a bit too low uh, for my liking. So it's kind of a dead card at this point. We probably should have brought that out off of the Magical Hats, but I didn't think of it at the time. And so we got to make do with what we got. We'll just set it as a bluff and then pass back to our opponent. Uh, they're going to set one pass back to us. And now we can kind of get off to the races here. We check their graveyard just to see what they've got that can actually deal with Jinzo. Uh, that would be bad for us. I think Change of Heart and Snatch Deal are the biggest fears for us in bringing out Jinzo. And we see that they're both in Grave. So we feel fine trading off the Sand Gang, summoning out Jinzo. And we will have to mandatory search here, but there are no targets in deck. So uh, we won't get our Sand Gang search, but we will get in for 2400 and pass back to them. 
They're going to set one pass back to us. Uh, confiscation is okay. It's not really that good when they don't really have any cards in hand. Um, but it's not terrible. We're going to think about exactly what to do here. And we are wondering if we can just get super aggressive and maybe attack another set with Mask of Darkness and then attack directly with Jinzo. It might be a bit too greedy of a play, but alternatively, we could just attack him with Jinzo and then attack him with Mask of Darkness to drop them down to a point where they've got less than Jinzo's attack in terms of life points. Um, I don't know. It might be a bit greedy, but we are just going to go for this. Uh, we're going to attack him with Jinzo instead of the Mask, and we are just going to attack him for 900, dropping them down to 2300. This way, if they've got a Fisher, they clear the Mask, and we can still attack in for game. So we're going to set this Confiscation as another bluff, pass back to our opponent, and we'll see what they do. They're just going to set one, and that is indeed the end of the game, as they've got no way to stop this now. We're going to attack him with Jinzo, and yep, all they've got are some cards that would not be that useful for them here. So that will be the end of the game. Uh, and I'm very glad that I got to show this deck off in these games because I think they were really sick. You know, game one, we didn't get to show off the hats combo that much uh, because of Jinzo, but we were still able to win. And game two, we showed off the hats combo, but we weren't able to win. Game three was that nice middle ground where we were able to show off the hats combo and also win. And I do actually think the hats combo actually caused us to win there because we didn't really have a good way to out Mechanical Chaser otherwise. And it came in very clutch being able to bring back that man your bug and immediately hats it. And if it had worked out a little bit better, we would have had Jinzo on the field a turn earlier as well. So that was a very good game. Uh, hats off to Soul both for the great games and also the incredible deck idea. I think this deck is really sick. Uh, it does have some major flaws, but I didn't keep it out of Tier 1 or maybe even Tier 2 contention. But it's definitely at least a rogue deck, and it's a really fun rogue deck at that. So let me know what you think about this deck down in the comments below. I look forward to our conversations as always. And until next time, I've been Ben from YGO from Zero, and I'm signing off.